NVIDIA CEO just dropped a massive reality check on the AI industry in America. You said something um, recently that was quite provocative. You, you said that China was winning the AI race, the AI competition. Um, um, I know that you've got a powerful, you know, competitor in Huawei. And Huawei has a lot of um, advantages you don't have. Why don't you describe this competition? Are we really losing? That was a very good headline. It was a great headline, yeah. <laughs> and it um, apparently caught up a lot of attention. Uh, uh, the, the, as you know with headlines, the disclaimer part, uh, the foundation part was left out of the headline. But, but the, the way to think about that is that let me just handicap it right now. If you look at AI and go back to the first thing that we said, AI is a five layer cake. Let's just always simplify. It's not, it's not quite this simplistic, but let's simplify AI into a five layer cake. Energy, chips, infrastructure, models, and applications. Okay? I'll just, and let's handicap it across the, uh, t from, top, from bottom to top. At the lowest level, energy, China has twice the amount of energy we have as a nation. Now I want to ask about that. Twice as much energy as we have as a nation. And their, our economy is larger than theirs. Makes no sense to me. We also know that one of, the most, one of the most important initiatives, one of the most important policies of this administration, and there was the first thing that President Trump said to me when we met, is, listen, we need to reindustrialize America. We need to onshore manufacturing again. We need to make, we need to help America make things again. It's going to create jobs. That part of the economy has been outshored on, you know, offshored uh, and completely gutted the United States. We need to bring that back and he needs my help to do so. And so, so that entire sector of the economy is missing. And however, without energy, how do we build chip plants, computer system plants, and these AI data centers, we call them AI factories. We're building simultaneously three different types of factories in the United States. Chip factories, supercomputer factories, and AI factories. They all require energy, every single one of them. Yeah. And so on the one hand, we want to reindustrialize the United States. How do you do that without energy? And so the fact that we vilified energy for so long, President Trump sticking his neck out and making, taking it on the chin and helping, this, helping the country realize that energy is necessary for our growth is one of the, the, really the, one of the greatest things he's done right off the bat. And so now, at the energy level, back to that stack, we're, you know, 50%. And they're growing straight up. We're kind of flat right now. And so, number one, uh, energy. Number two, chips. We're generations ahead. We are generations ahead on chips. And I think everybody recognizes that. Number three, infrastructure. If you want to build a data center here in the United States, from breaking ground to standing up an AI supercomputer, is probably about three years. They can build a hospital on a weekend. That's a real challenge. And so at the infrastructure le layer, their velocity of building things, because they are builders, their velocity of building things is extraordinarily high. Now, really quickly on, on chips, we're several generations ahead, but don't be complacent. Remember, semiconductors is a manufacturing process. Anybody who thinks China can't manufacture is missing a big idea. But China discounts energy costs for a chip company by 50%. That's right. They, they provide free transportation for employees to come out to the factory. That's right. I mean, you, don't, you can't do that. I mean, Our energy you, cost is more expensive than theirs in the first place. Absolutely. And then they discounted 50%. And so it's probably, we're probably, call it four to eight times the cost. Yeah. So tell me, how do you feel about this? Uh, this, Jake, this great competition with China. I mean, the, 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 the government is putting enormous resources underneath their champion. We don't do that in this country. You know, uh, how do you feel about that? Well, before I get there, 
don't, don't let me not answer that question. I'm dying to answer it. But let me handicap the next two layers. The large, the language, the model layer, the model layer, United States frontier models, United, our, our frontier models are unquestionably world class. We are probably, call it six months ahead. However, out of the 1.4 million models, most of them are open source. China is well ahead, way ahead on open source. Now, the reason why open source is so important is because without open source, startups can't thrive, university researchers can't do research, you can't teach AI, scientists can't use AI. Basically, all of the industry around the, your economy have no ability to fundamentally advance themselves mm -hmm. unless you have open source. Without Linux, where would we be? Without Kubernetes, where, you know, without PyTorch, all of these different types of technologies that made AI thrive are all open source. Mm. They are well ahead of us on open source. Mm. Mm. And then the layer above that, applications. If you were to do a poll of, of um, uh, their society and ours, and you ask them, uh, is AI likely to do more good than harm? They're going to say, in their case, 80% would say AI will do more good than harm. In our case, it'd be the other way around. <laughs> and so that tells you something that's very, very important. Yeah. Socially, socially, we need yeah. to be careful not to describe AI in these science fiction movie ways of describing AI and, and causing people so much concern. Um, we want to be concerned, but we also want to be practical. AI is about automation. And that area, I think that we need to be careful not to fall behind in the application and the diffusion of AI, because in the end, whoever applies the technology first and most wins that industrial revolution. Jensen is warning us that we are too obsessed with clever chatbots and ignoring the hard physical reality that China is building the industrial capacity to run the future while America is getting tangled in red tape. Jensen points out a staggering gap at the bottom of the AI cake. China has twice the energy of the US. But more importantly, he mentions the velocity difference. China can build massive data centers in months, while in the US, it often takes years just to break ground. Jensen explicitly connects this need for a national re-industrialization. To understand why this is an emergency, you have to look at the timeline. In major US hubs like Northern Virginia, it can now take up to seven years to get a new data center connected to the power grid. You have AI models improving every six months, but the buildings to house them in can easily take the best part of half a decade. This mismatch could be fatal. China does not have this problem because their grid is state controlled and prioritized for industrial growth. They can align their power generation with their AI factories instantly. So what we are watching here we are watching a tortoise and hare race where the hare, US tech, is asleep and the tortoise, Chinese infrastructure, has a jetpack. Now, if the critical link between data center expansion, energy grids, and the AI war has you confused, don't worry. I built a course that is built for you. It's your all-in-one roadmap to understanding the AI landscape. We cover the foundational essentials, then a deep dive into things like compute hardware and how AI truly operates in practice. By now, and you get lifetime access, and because the course expands over time, the price will also go up over time. So now is the best time to join, link in the description. Back to the video. Jensen is subtly calling for a total overhaul of how America builds things. The US needs to treat AI data centers like national critical infrastructure, similar to how we treated highways in the 1950s. This means categorical exclusions for clean energy products to bypass years of environmental reviews. It means restarting dormant nuclear plants, something tech giants are already trying to do, and modernizing the grid. If we don't deregulate the physical world, America will be a country with the world's best brain, but no body to put it in. This is where NVIDIA plays an important role. They are selling the time machine to build the factories faster. Jensen mentioned digital twins. Using NVIDIA's Omniverse platform, companies like Foxconn are building 100% accurate digital replicas of their factories before they pour a single drop of concrete. They simulate the robots, the airflow, the cooling, and the assembly lines in a virtual world 
where the laws of physics apply. This allows them to make many mistakes in the simulator, which costs a hell of a lot less money, so they make less mistakes in real life. Previous historic case studies show this can speed up construction planning by 30% and reduce simulation times from hours to seconds. NVIDIA is effectively giving American builders a cheat code to compress that seven year timeline, helping the US close the speed gap through software. But even if we manage to fix the energy grid and build the factories, Jensen warns that we are walking right into a different kind of trap. One that has almost nothing to do with physics and everything to do with influence. While American companies are keeping their best AI secret and expensive, China is winning the global game by giving technology away for free to capture the world's developers. Jensen highlighted a critical split. The US leads in frontier models, the absolute cutting edge, but China is way ahead in open source. Chinese models like DeepSeek are dominating global downloads because anyone can use them without paying expensive fees. Jensen warns that we can't afford to lose the global developer ecosystem. We're seeing a repeat of the Android versus iPhone war. Apple captured the luxury market with a closed expensive ecosystem, but Google via Android captured the rest of the world by making their system free and open. China is playing the Android card by releasing high quality free models. They are training the next generation of engineers in India, Brazil, Africa, and Southeast Asia to use their tools. If a startup in Indonesia wants to build an AI app, they won't pay expensive API fees to OpenAI. They will download a free Chinese model. Over time, this creates ecosystem lock-in. The standards, the plugins, and the workflows become optimized for Chinese AI. The US risks becoming a boutique provider for the rich West, while China powers the infrastructure of the global South. To win, the US needs to flood the market with high-performance open American models like Llama from Meta to ensure the world's digital plumbing remains American. Recently, in other interviews, Jensen also touched on a massive new trend, sovereign AI. Nations like France, Japan, Saudi Arabia, and India are realizing they can't rely on US tech giants for their national intelligence. They don't want their citizens' data sitting in a data center in Virginia. They want to own their intelligence. This is a huge opportunity for NVIDIA, Jensen is flying around the world telling world leaders, don't rent AI from Google, build your own AI factory with my chips. By partnering with companies like HPE to sell sovereign cloud, NVIDIA is helping these nations build their own independent AI infrastructure. This is why NVIDIA is the ultimate hedge in a bifurcated world where the internet splits into a Chinese zone and an American zone. NVIDIA is the only player that wins in both. Their chips act as the universal translator, whether a country runs on American software like OpenAI or Chinese software like DeepSeek, they all generally run best on NVIDIA's hardware. One of our clients started with zero audience. Now they're doing $100,000 months thanks to YouTube. And they're not alone. We've helped three businesses hit that level just by growing them a YouTube channel. Want to see how this could work for your business? Book a call with me below.